Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kachodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Giving double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much in this lesson, you know, it's going to be a little different. And it's going to be titled as um, Temptation is going to increase. Temptation is going to increase, all right, amongst the brethren. Temptation is going to increase amongst the brethren. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost, man, because the longer you're in this truth, the more your afflictions are going to increase. All right. You're going to be attacked left and right. You're going to go through a lot. But just know that the Lord is dealing with you because the Lord is trying you individually. Because you're on camera, right? You're speaking in his name. You're doing the works, right? You're sustaining in the Lord's ministry. So now the Lord has to try you to see if you're going to continually glorify him. So it's basically a test. You individually, if you're in this truth, if you've been in this truth six months and above, you're going to go through a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering, a lot of trials and fiery furnaces of tribulation, of temptation is going to come. You can't get angry or upset about it either. You got to know where you, when you're being tried and you just got to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to deliver you out of that situation. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. You have to endure through your own afflictions. The Lord knows where to try you individually according to your own measure. And let's get some precepts out. Because look, just because you're in the truth and you're going through all these things, don't think that, you know, no other brother in this thing is not going through nothing. All of us is going through things. Some brothers is going through things differently than other brothers. Some brothers is going through things mentally. It ain't got to be physically. You got brothers that's going through things mentally. You got brothers going through things with finances. You got brothers. Each and every one of us go, has our own lot that the Lord is putting us through that we got to go through. We don't know what our lot is, but we got to play it out. First Peter five and nine. It says, "Whom resisteth?" It says, "Like it." It says, "Whom resists steadfast in the faith." Con, you have to steadfast in the faith when you're going through temptation. You have to steadfast in the faith. Faith is what's going to get you through in your trials and tribulations, through your temptations, your afflictions that you deal with on a daily basis. You have to steadfast in the faith. It says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren. So the brethren, who are the brethren? The men of the Lord, the brothers that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity, starting from the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down to the sincere brothers that's under the banner of Great Millstone, like myself, that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity. Brothers are going through similar afflictions as you are. Some brothers is going through different things. We all have our own uh, uh, weaknesses that the Lord knows where to try us in. If you have a woman, some brothers is dealing with a woman. Their woman is putting that brother through hell. Same thing for a different situation. Brothers is going through finance. You got the finance demon messing with you. You got the anxiety and depression demon messing with you. But you have to stand fast in the faith through all of that. You have to be fully persuaded in your own mind to know that you're going through temptation and to pray to the Lord, to ask the Lord to deliver you out of your situations. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. You cannot come into the, don't come into this truth and think that you're not going to go through nothing because now you you know your Hebrew is like, you know, all these breakdowns, you know, all these scriptures that you're not going to go through nothing. No, you're going to go through a lot in this truth. You're going to go through a lot and it just doesn't come one time and then that's it. No, there's no end of temptation. It's going to keep coming. You have to be uh, 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 enduring through it, though. You have to endure through it. You have to be fully persuaded and know, right? 
read it forget from the top. First Peter five and nine. Whom resisted stead who resist who resist steadfast, right? In the faith. So you have to steadfast in this thing. You cannot lose the faith. It says that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, right? That are in the world. So you got brothers in this thing, they're going through similar things as you. Each and every one of us individually has our own uh, afflictions and, 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 and uh, situations that we're going through on our daily lives. The Lord knows where to try you individually according to your own measure. So you have, you may be in a camp, but when you're separated from your brethren, the Satan tries most to mess with you is when you're by yourself. That's when temptation comes. Satan, that's when he really does his intensifying, when you're by yourself. When you're by yourself and you're away from the brethren and it's a whole week that you got to work or a whole week, you know, you, you know, yeah, you talk to brothers, you know, um, off camera, etc. But Satan messes you most is when you're alone. That's where temptation comes for you individually. That's why the scriptures say this. This is Sirach 2 and 1. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, you came to serve the Lord. You created you a garment. You, you put fringes on that garment, right? You made the, the decision to, to, to learn this truth. You bought you a King James Version Bible, right? You got you an apographer, right? You went out there. You saw the men of the Lord's teaching. You went out there to learn, to get this truth. Well, the Lord put the Spirit on you, but you was devoted to do this work. You came to serve the Lord. You showed yourself worthy in the eyes of the Lord. You showed, when you put that garment on, you turn on that damn phone, cell phone you got, and you start that damn stream yard, that, that prism, and you go out there and you call upon the name of the Lord. When you do your intro, you, at that moment, you came to serve the Lord. So now the Lord is going to put you through trials and tribulations. He's going to put you through different diversities that you got to deal with individually. Yeah, you're in a camp, but you individually got to endure through your afflictions. Nobody can save you in this truth. Nobody can. I can't. Nobody can save you. You individually. I'm speaking to myself, first and foremost, me as an individual in the camp that I'm in, I still have to deal with my own afflictions mentally, spiritually, and physically. Nobody can save me out of that but Yahweh Bashimashai. So you came to serve the Lord. It says, prepare thy soul for temptation. You got to be prepared for temptation when it comes your way. Temptation is going to come. Temptation is going to come. You just got to be on your two feet to expect it. That's why the elders of Paul's Great Millstone say, don't get comfortable in the truth. You're not supposed to be comfortable in this thing. You're going to know, you're going to have to know and expect temptation when it comes your way. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. Because I'm experienced, but I'm not fully experienced like other brothers. But I'm just letting you know, when temptation comes your way, you have to expect it. The scriptures say, prepare thy soul for temptation. So you got to be on your own two feet and you got to be prepared for it to come your way. There's no end to temptation. It's going to come your way. You're going to deal with a lot of things in this truth and it's going to increase. The longer you're in this truth, the more things are going to increase. The more things are going to come your way. It's going to come. This is why we can't get comfortable in the truth. So rock two and two, it says, set thy heart, meaning your mind, upright and constantly endure. So you are to constantly endure through your afflictions, your torments. You are to constantly endure through those things. You can't let nothing get you upset. You can't get angry or upset. And you can't let nothing stop you from glorifying the Lord. You have to continually teach. No matter how low of a state the Lord brings you, you have to endure through your own trials and tribulations. You have to endure through it. It says, and make not haste in the time of trouble. Make not haste. Don't be quick to make rash decisions because of your afflictions. You got individuals that do that. You know, I pray... The Lord keeps me in a sound mind and all of us in a sound mind where we don't be hasty to do things because this is going this way. So you want to haste to make that decision. It can put you it can make your situation worse if you go in haste to tr try to make, you know, think this is going to work this way, making your own rash decisions quickly. That's why the scriptures say don't haste. Don't make haste. Don't make haste, man. It can put you in a bad situation. You got to you got to really take time out. Pray to the Lord and, you know, have the Lord guide you. He's going to put the spirit on you to make the right decision but if you go in haste and just make decisions then you can put yourself in a bad situation james 1 and 2 it says my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations right count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations because you're going to go through diverse temptations many different temptations many different things i said it many times in my lessons i'll say it again you might have a woman you've been with for 20 years and she winds up leaving you 
Satan gets a hold of your woman, she starts bugging out, and she winds up leaving you to be with somebody else. That has happened. Don't get upset. Don't fall apart. I already went through that situation, and I'm experiencing that. That's why I'm saying it, and that's why I say it. My woman left me for being in the truth. So when it comes your way, don't lose the faith. Don't lose the faith. And I've been with my woman for almost 13 years. All right? Almost 13 years of relationship. The Esau way, we've been married for eight, almost eight years. It would have been eight years in October last year. So I'm just letting brothers know because I'm experiencing that. That has happened to me. So I'm telling you, don't lose the faith. If, any, if your woman leaves you, continually teach. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but the Lord is going to strengthen you. The Lord is doing things. He's drawing that woman out for a reason. Maybe that woman was a distraction for you being in the truth, you know? Things going to happen. You're going to have finances. You're going to have bills. You know, you, you, you pay one bill. Boom, you got another bill coming out here after that. It's like, what the fuck? I just paid this bill. I got this fucking bill. You know, the Lord is going to try you. The Lord has to try us, man. The Lord has to put us through diverse temptations. That lets you know that the Lord is dealing with you. If you're going through a lot in this world, the Lord is dealing with you. That's how you know we're in Israel. That's how we know we're Israelites because we're under the curses. We are under the curses. It's sweet to your lips at first, but then it goes sour because the sourness is the things that start coming to you. You could be a Jake that never went through nothing. Then when you come into the truth and you get a year, two years, three years, then just things just start going haywire. Things just start going out of control. That lets you know right then and there that the Lord is dealing with you because you're going through a lot. You're going through a lot, man. James 1 and, 1 and 2, it says, My brother encountered all joy when ye, you, individually, right? When ye fall into diverse temptations, you individually got your own obstacles that the Lord is going to put you through. The Lord knows where to try you individually according to your own measure. Nobody can save you out of that situation but the Lord. That's why you got to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to deliver you out of that situation. Nobody can save you in this truth. That goes with salvation. That goes with your trials and tribulations. Nobody in this truth can save you out of your situation. This is why you got you to gotta do the works. You got to continually do the will of the Lord. You got to stay on fire because you got Satan fucking with us. And the temptation afflictions are going to increase. It's increasing. The more longer you're in the truth, the more afflictions you're going to go through in this world, man. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. So this, that's why the scriptures say, James 1 and 2, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So, hey, tempta diverse temptations. You're going to have many different temptations coming your way. You're going to have many different temptations coming your way. This is James 1 and 3. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, you individually, right? Your faith. It says, st it said steadfast in the faith, right? When we were reading that. Steadfast in the faith. So you got to steadfast in the faith. So you're going to be tried, what? A to your faith. You're going to be tried on your faith, right? James 1 and 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And that word patience goes into the Greek word upamene, which means consistency or endurance. So you're going to be tried on many different things. Mentally, spiritually, physically. If you got a depression on you, that's the that's that's the uh, depression demon. You got panic attacks, anxieties. That's the anxiety demon. That's that's the panic demon. The demon. That's a demon. When you feel low to a state, you just feel low. That's Satan messing with you. The Satan is messing with us. That's why we got to be changed, because in these carnal bodies that we're in, these mortal bodies, which that word mortal means death, we're messed with on a daily basis. You got demons messing with you. This is why we got to go on a fast. We got to consistently pray. We got to consistently be embedded in the truth. We got to, you got to be in the truth more. You got to be reading the scriptures more off camera, rather on camera, off camera. You got to read scriptures more because these afflictions and torments are going to increase. We're in the last days. We've been in the last days since the Messiah first stepped foot on the scene, man. So we're going to go through afflictions. And Yahushua went through a lot more afflictions than what we went through. His was on a higher level than all of us, man. Him, Yahushua. Right? Job, Job went through hell of stuff. But the Lord gave him, rewarded him double, man. You know? And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost in this thing. I ain't no damn expert at just, you know, saying I can, you know, deal with this, deal with that. I'm not telling nobody to deal with nothing. But just know not to lose the faith. Don't let your fire go out. Consistently teach. No matter how horrible it is getting in, in for you in this thing. Because just know the Lord is trying you. He's testing you. He's, he, that's how the Lord works. He tests you. He, how we know? Read the book of Job. Job went through a lot. He went through a lot. His woman even was telling him to give up on the Lord and die. She was even telling him that. When you read Job, the second chapter, in the ninth verse to the tenth verse, she, she, was, she basically told him to give up on the Lord and die because he was smitten with boils. 
Satan smitten him with balls from the crown of his head to his foot. So the Lord allows Satan to mess with him. Satan can do the same thing to us. The Lord allows Satan to mess with us. He has to get permission from the Heavenly Father first before he can do anything. He can't just, just go and just do this, do that. No, the Lord allows Satan to mess with us. It's basically to strengthen us, though, because the times that are going to come, it's going to be way worse than what we're going through now. This is just this is just on the fucking surface of shit, you know? When things get real, it's going to get way worse than the things that you think the things you're dealing with now is hard. Wait till the time of Jacob trouble. You know, the things we're going through right now is on the light, light surface of stuff, man. So rock two and four, it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Right. The things that are brought upon you and check cheerfully. Don't don't get angry or upset. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. Don't get angry, or upset. Don't take it as damn, man, the Lord ain't dealing with me because you got brothers that do that. They go through all these things. They're like, damn, the Lord must not be dealing. No, the Lord is dealing with you. The Lord is trying to make you stronger. The Lord is dealing with you. Because if you're a person that's not going, you would want to be a person that is that is going through stuff than a person that's not going through nothing. Because a person that's not going through nothing at all should be worried because that means the Lord ain't dealing with them. The Lord, if you're not going through nothing, the Lord is not dealing with you. We can prove that in Hebrews 12. This is uh, Sirach 2 and 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. Take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed when thou art changed to a low estate. So you're going to be brought low by the Lord. The Lord is going to bring you down. The Lord is going to lift you up and he's going to bring you down. That's how the Lord works. The Lord works in perfect balance, man. The Lord is going to put us through different things. We're going to put us through different obstacles. You know, we we just can't get angry or upset, man. You know, that lets us know the Lord is dealing with us. So rock two and five. For gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men in a furnace of adversity. So we got to go through the things of the furnace of adversities. It's going to be many different things. Whatever it is. It don't have to be a woman. It don't have to be finances. It could be mentally. You could be going through stuff. We all go through different stuff, man. That's why we got to be changed, man. That's why we got to be changed. You know, we have emotions. This body's emotional. It's corrupt. It causes us to go off, fall off. That's why we got to be changed, man. But for us to be changed, we got to go through the furnace of adversity. We got to endure through those things, you know. Satan knows that, you know, we almost about to receive that crown. So he's going to he's going to increase the afflictions upon us, man. He's going to increase these afflictions on us. So rock two and six, believe in him. See, believe in him. Believe in who? Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. Believe in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai? The Messiah. Yahweh Shai, man. He is our comforter. He is our mediator. He is our comforter. Yahweh Shai is our mediator. He's our comforter, man. We got to cry out to the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Shai, to deliver us out of our afflictions, man. It says, and he will help thee. The Lord will help thee. But you got to know the name of the Lord, and you got to be having a faith, and you got to be fully persuaded in your own mind to know that the Lord will do these things. You got to be confident in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord, man. Right? Sirach 2 and 6. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way upright and trust in him. Con. So you got to trust in the Lord. We have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust in the Lord, man. You know? Hebrews 12 and 6. Let's get this out. Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. See? See? Whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. The Lord's going to put you through different things. You came into the truth, you're going you're gonna to go through stuff. And if you are a Jake that can't handle your afflictions and torment, you can't, you can't, you can't able to handle it, then guess what? Maybe you not of the elect. Maybe you weren't the elect to begin with. Because the scriptures say many are called, but only a few are chosen. Not every single Hebrew Israelite is the elect. We don't know who the elect is. Not every single Hebrew Israelite is, is, is going to be saved. All right? The scriptures say many are called, but only a few are chosen. Not every single Hebrew Israelite is the elect. And not every single Hebrew Israelite is going to be saved either. Because you got guys out there teaching false doctrines, right? You got Jake's in this thing. They not going through nothing. But you got the men of the Lord that are really teaching this word of truth and sincerity. They're going through a lot. We all are going through a lot. We're all going through a lot in this truth. It says, for whom the Lord loveth. He chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So you come into this thing, right? Everything is good for a minute. You know, you're learning. You made you a garment. You got you a King James Bible. You got you an apographer, right? You started separating from the ways of this society. You stop eating the abominable foods, right? You start rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of your ability. 
you start going out there doing lessons, you start doing lessons, and then you start going out there teaching, you start, you get you a 12 tribe chart, you start doing the will of the Lord, Lord is pleased with that, but now the Lord is like, okay, do this, do that, because the Lord will send Satan after you, take this from him, and see if he's still going to teach, have him lose his woman, his wife, he's been married with his wife for 20 years, have her leave him, put the spirit on that woman, hop on her, have her leave him and see if he's still going to glorify me. Okay. We're going we to um, raise up his, uh, his, his finances. Let's, 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 let's put pressure on him with bills. Because that happens. That's how the Lord works. This is how the Lord works. The Lord is strengthening us, man. This is going to happen. Okay. Go mess with him. Put the panic demon on him. See, see if he's still going to glorify me. Because the Lord knows where to try us. I'm just giving examples. This is how the Lord works. He does these things, man. Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord is in power of good and evil. Satan does his work on the left-hand side for the Heavenly Father. Read the book of Job. The Lord allowed Satan to mess with Job. So anybody that's saying that's not true, read the book of Job. Why did the Lord let Satan mess with Job? The Lord allowed Satan to mess with Job. The, the Lord was testing Job to see if he was going to continually glorify him, man. And that's what Job did. He passed. Now it's our turn. We got to go through this, right? This is Hebrews 12 and 7. If ye endure chastising, Yahweh Bashimashai dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastised not? Verse 8. But if ye be without chastising whereof, all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So that means the Lord ain't dealing with you. If you ain't going through nothing, the Lord is not dealing with you, man. Right? Verse 9. It says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we have gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? You see? Because, right, in, in, these, in these earthly flesh, we have fathers, right? We had our fathers to correct us. We had our parents to correct us, right, when we were wrong, right? So now we have the Heavenly Father. We came into this truth. We have our Heavenly Father correcting us spiritually, man. And He has to put us through different things. This is all to get you strong in the ministry. This is Hebrews 11 and 37. It says they were stoned. And this is going into the prophets. This is the things that the prophets went through. Hebrews 11 and 37. They were stoned. You have prophets that were stoned in this truth. They were, they were stoned. I'm talking about this truth. I'm talking about in the ancient world. You have prophets that were stoned. They were stoned. The men of the Lord. They were stoned. They were put to death. Stephen was one of them. He was stoned to death. He says they were, they were sawn asunder. Right? Were uh, tempted. They were tempted. Right? were slain with the sword. You had a lot of prophets that were beheaded in the, in the ancient world. They were beheaded, right? It says they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. We're tormented in this truth. Each and every one of us individually is tormented, whether it's mentally, right? Spiritually or physically, we, we, we get tormented in this thing, man. But, hey, the Lord is still keeping the spirit on us. He's still keeping the fire on us. To do his will, man. To do his works. And that's what it's all about. Let me get that precept out, man. I love that precept. Because um, this is what it's about. Get that precept out, man. I was thinking about that. That's the spirit. Because that's what it's about, man. This is what it's about, man, right here. This is John uh, 4 and 34. Yahweh Shai saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And that's what it is. We got to teach unto the very end. We got to teach unto death. So no matter what infirmities and afflictions that head that come your way, beloved brothers, continually sustain, endure through your trials and tribulations, man. Because it's all worth it at the end. What's on the other side, you're going to be given your crown. And this is that spiritual war. When you go through temptation, it's a spiritual war between yourself. Because you're being tested to either fall out or to consistently be it in this thing. So you being tried, each and every one of us, including myself. So, hey, Lord one is less than edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Yahweh, Kachodash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother, scattered abroad, put your forth this word in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Mashiach Razaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. So, hey, brothers, 
Stay enduring. It's going to be all right, man. You're not in this alone. We all in this together. Cry out to the Lord, Yahweh Bashi Mashai, to deliver you out of your situations, man. Shalom.